Happy Black That's History Month! Right. Oh, should we stand? What is this? What does that say? Tactical difficulties. As always. Oh, you know what? I'm an idiot. How do you turn it around? Oh, you're so funny. <laughs> We're gonna have to end it. Bottom left corner. Oh, there we go. Oh no. Try one more time. Weird. Weird. There's no picture. Try Hi, that. everybody. Hey, we didn't forget about you. Now we're going to try it again. And sorry, we're having technical difficulties with the um, done. So um, go ahead and tell them what we're talking about. Okay, yes. Okay, so just I'm so glad you guys are all here. I see we already have a couple of viewers bouncing on already. And I'm so glad you guys have joined us because today we're talking about Black History Month and why is it important for everybody to know these things and my favorite part about this segment is is we're going to be talking about a lot of things that you probably didn't know. Things that you use every day. You're probably using one of these things right now and you probably never knew where it came from. So I'm going to swing over to our... Sorry, page. we're having technical difficulties. No, it's Hey, Belle. And I'm going to click on ours from my phone too just to make sure we're good on, on that end. Yay. YouTube's just acting a fool today. It is. It won't go. I don't know what the deal is. Here. Oh, nice. My Public. Died. Public. I won't be able to see comments today, guys. My phone just died. Well, we might only be able to go live on. Um, I don't know what's the deal here. We can always take Facebook and upload it to YouTube. That's what we'll do. Okay. So, live. unfortunately, we're not going live on YouTube. So you can have my cord. Oh, cool. Awesome. Yeah. I'll bring it in right over there. Gosh, are, thank you. Yeah, plug it um, so that you can see it. No, there's nothing anywhere. Go across the other side and plug it in. Okay, yeah, then I'll just yeah. like drape it over. Hi, sorry about that. Okay, so unfortunately, we're having technical difficulties with YouTube. So I will upload this video onto YouTube uh, tomorrow morning. So we're not going to be live on YouTube tonight. I'm sorry to those on YouTube waiting for us. Um, but anyways, uh, today we're going to celebrate Black History Month, the just like, um, see I said munch instead of month. <laughs> this is why. So, um, we're going to celebrate Black History Month today as it winds up with in the month of February. Yep. But I want to tell you why, why February? Why is February Black History Month? February is the chosen month for Black History Month because of two very important reasons. Um, Abraham Lincoln and... Abraham Lincoln and um, Fre Frederick George, Douglass. Frederick Douglass. Both their birthdays fall within the month of February. Also, Frederick, Frederick Douglass died in the month of February yes, as well. So um, instead of having a month on another month and then celebrating these, they combined it into yeah, the month of February. Yeah, why not take the big so, person who started yes. it all and make yeah. it about that? So Abraham Lincoln. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Abraham Lincoln. So when we talk about um, famous uh, black Americans that um, made a huge contribution to the United, to, to the world, really, yeah. to the world, and you'll find a lot of this stuff here. And again, like I was talking to you about earlier, you're probably using one of these things or yeah. probably used one 30 minutes ago yeah. and didn't even know it. Right. So, you know, we've got a lot of samples of what um, uh, inventions... Yeah. Either inventions that were directly invented by, or a little bubble spurted off, and then they kind of became correct. Co creator. Correct. Because we're going to talk. I'm going to first talk about and um, Carver, Washington okay. Carver, and then we're going to get into something that a lot of people don't probably know is Betty Boop. Yes. So um, Washington Carver, who a lot of people think actually invented peanut butter, did not invent peanut butter per se. And why is that, Jason? Well, because peanut butter kind of existed beforehand, and what they. Carver, there's so much more to him than just peanut than butter. Than just peanut butter. Actually, he's known as the plant doctor. Yep. Okay, so Washington Carver was born in slavery. Mm -hmm. and uh, But he was also born very sickly and with a lot of um, ailments sure. and physical. So he was not able to work in the fields. Yep, he had to stay inside and he had to yep. do a lot of the so cooking. He, yep, he worked in the kitchen. And so, um, and then he had a lot of downtime as well, because he couldn't do a lot of the physical stuff that they needed in the fields and stuff like sure. that. So he had hours where he'd roam through the woods. Yep. And he became, and that developed his love of plants. And then being infatuated with what we now call peanuts and peanut butter? Yes. Well, he <laughs> um, also wanted, I mean, his accomplishments 
just unfold. They oh, unfold. Absolutely. They unfold. I have learned so much going through and um, researching Carver mm -hmm. because from an inventor that we know yep. today, he was a famous scientist when it came to botany and plants and flowers and how you can use plants and flowers, legumes, which is a peanut, and um, different herbs and spices to help the body. And keep in mind, this is when like Carver was adding peanuts and the like, sh what you said, shampoo, body oh, wash, yeah. and things like so, that. So peanut paste and stuff like that. Because so his he was born in 1864. Crazy. I mean, he was way ahead of his time, and unfortunately, he didn't get the recognition he should have. Absolutely. Um, which we find with a lot of these people that we're going to be talking about tonight and, and what they did. And surprisingly, speaking of what you just said, a lot of these people didn't get the recognition that they that they deserved, and it didn't really matter about who took it from them. It's just mm -hmm. mainly why they didn't get that recognition. So if I were to have to say um, to like identify something with wash with Carver, um, and a lot of people look at the peanut tins and stuff like peanut butter tins and stuff like that. I would actually attribute an actual peanut. Oh, absolutely. More so, like the he, actual plant peanut. He, he did more with peanut in itself than mm -hmm. peanut butter. Right. Peanut butter was just one of the 300 different things. That you could do with peanut. That he did with, with a peanut. peanut yep. And that he <laughs> patented with a peanut, which is interesting, huh? So, um, but I do want to mention something before we get into that over there. And what we did was when we taught, when we chose who we were going to talk about, we wanted to make sure that we it had to tied, show you. and it tied in with the vintage and antique because a lot of the original designs that that they created morphed into different things. Absolutely. So the further back you go, the closer you get to their actual designs. Yes. So like you know. We own a vintage antique store. So. Heck yes, we do a little bit of everything. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so in 1916, um, Carver published his book, How to Grow and Use Peanuts. <laughs> Can you believe that? But anyways, one of the things I got, one of the things I got to say is when he graduated school, he be, he moved down to Tuskegee, Alabama. And what school did he go to, by the way? Uh, what school did he go to? Now you're throwing things at me I have to read about. Oh, yes. He was the very first black person period to um, be accepted into what is now known as the Iowa um, State University. Mm -hmm. So he graduated Iowa University and then he moved to Tuskegee, Alabama yep. and he worked in Tuskegee, um, Alabama and he ran the agricultural department at Tuskegee College. Which at that time when you're the only person of race kind of taking a movement upon that you kind of had to be a little inspiration for the people around mm -hmm. you for sure so his main invention was use taking the peanut and reducing it to the oil mm -hmm. and using the oil to, in different things and keep talking about that i'm just yeah. going to show them this while you're talking mm -hmm. about that this little message on here is super important and only because this peanut butter was packaged and made in Bay City, Michigan. But besides that, it says the real food value of peanut butter lies in the oil. Therefore, when the oil rises to the top, stir back into the butter before using. So every time you open up your peanut butter and you're like, ew, there's all this oil on there. No, that's the good stuff. You just mix it right back in. So Washington Carver, he died in 1943, and they actually buried him on the Tuskegee grounds. Oh, nice. Yeah, that's pretty cool. He's got some lasting legacies. Oh, absolutely. Um, uh, people like Roosevelt, Henry Ford, Henry Ford, mm -hmm. um, Roosevelt, and Edison, they all looked up to him. Because mm -hmm. they, they all learned something from each other, mm -hmm. whether that was like, so he, whether that was like how they could have spread peanut butter that was also right. like a huge thing that he he did as well i think we were talking about that mm -hmm. earlier he didn't therefore make peanut butter it was how he could have took peanut butter and made it better and made it better correct um so when people invent things regardless of who they are mm -hmm. it's not always the actual thing you see it could be an addition to sure you know so when you think of carver and you walk through vintage and antique stores or grocery stores you know move it from just the peanut butter and move it to peanuts and to plants and to salads yep. and to stuff like that because if you love peanut butter, if you love anything with peanuts, you should thank Carver. Period. Reese's, I know David, you're watching that show. Okay, so candy. Reese's, I don't know if it has real peanuts in it. Okay, but it's so good, right? It's so good. <laughs> and I say that only because it's manufactured and processed. So I'm gonna grab my sure. mobile just to see if we have any questions. Okay, so um, she's gonna get into Betty Boop, which is a lot of people 
have the misconception that Betty Boop is um, an actual white girl, and it's not. Uh, she's she's a black woman who sang and wrote Boop Boop De Doop and performed as Betty Boop. So she'll get into that. But one of the things I want to do is a did you know. So going forward, we're going to have a did you know at the beginning and uh, did you know at the end. And it may not, it may relate to our topics and it may not. It's probably not ever. <laughs> right. Well, today mine is going to. Okay. <laughs> so as she comes back over and talks about, um, but before she talks about Betty Boop, did you know? And we, we got to both say it like it's fun. Did you, did you know, know? <laughs> um, that Frank Sinatra, thanked Frank Sinatra, was so irritated that they made um, Sammy Davis Jr. sleep in a separate hotel, like the La Caja Falls in um, Las Vegas, but he had to perform at the Sands. So did you know that Sinatra actually went to the Sands and demanded that they allow um, Sammy Davis Jr. to uh, actually stay there, otherwise he would never walk in there again. Which I mean, when that's a good friend of yours and you want to see your friends do well, you do things like that. Well, not just that. I mean, why? Yeah, why? He's got to be here to perform. So, I mean, it makes no sense. And Anyways. people were happy to see him anyway. And I feel like they just did that because they knew they could. Right. So that's my did you know. And her did you know will come later on. And I'm really excited. And like I said, they may not always pertain. <laughs> and I promise you, you guys probably will never know this one. Um, okay, cool. So I'm really excited to get moving on to this. When we brought this up in a topic, Jason already knew that I was going to jump all over Betty Boop. Mm -hmm. uh, so I'm just going to list off a couple of bullet points here that you guys probably never knew. So Betty Boop is, is based off of a real woman, a real black woman, and her name mm -hmm. is Esther Jones. Yep. And she was based on a black jazz singer in Harlem, New York. Mm -hmm. And um, Max Flesher created the show Betty Boop in 1930. And Betty Boop, as a character herself, her birthday is August 9th, and she I actually, didn't know that. Yeah, she turned 92. She's a Leo. Year. Yeah, <laughs> mm. which makes a lot of sense. Right? Um, but by 1940, however, unfortunately, the entertainment career of 22-year-old Esther Jones was over, and she was no longer a child singing or dancing sensation. Esther Jones was now widely credited with influencing the iconic sex symbol of Betty Boop, but unfortunately died in 1984 in her New York City town um, due to liver and kidney complications okay. since she was 60. So, of course... The reason why this doll, this porcelain doll, and the other one that we'll show you, oh, the yes. wedding one, is um, depicted as a white girl. Is because when her TV show came out, mm -hmm. obviously look at her. She has her shoulders out, her makeup's done, she's wearing jewelry. And if you know anything about old school Betty Boop, she was adventurous, she was flirtatious, she was self-determined. And women in general, no matter if you were black or white, nobody wanted to see that on TV. Mm -hmm. It was it was forbidden. And when she kind of became a thing, they said, okay, fine, if we're going to allow this to be on TV, then she certainly can't be a black woman either. So we're just going to have to make it a little bit better by just making her white. Right. Um, but these are porcelain too. And they're beautiful. Aren't they beautiful? Look at her little purse. And like she's got they like beautiful. Beautiful, like real movable necklace. I love it. And just like the back is just she's I'm my so bummed about that. About this. It's not our fault. I know. It's technology's fault. So, anyways, we do carry quite a bit of Betty Boop stuff. Uh from the porcelain dolls to um uh, and these are the only porcelain dolls we really carry. We have a make your own trash can with we Betty do. Boop on it. And, and a lot of just cool. fun um, Betty Boop items from the, the 80s, 90s. And uh, so if you love Betty Boop, come on in and take a look at Heck it. Heck yeah, because she loves you too. Yes, she does. <laughs> oh, and also random fun fact. If you've ever watched the old school, like the original Betty Boop show from 1930, you will always know that she was drawn and colored in with her black hair. There was only one actual um, instance where it was in color and she had red hair. She also had a boyfriend named Bimbo and that's that little black and white dog that you guys see all the time. Okay, I'm dying because this one is hilarious. <laughs> oh, yes. Okay. Okay. So keychains. Let's talk about keychains. Okay. <laughs> so... Keychains, right? We have thousands of keychains. Keychains galore. You name it, we have it. You need one for it somewhere you're going, we got it. You need some. I mean, we got more keychains. You key just chains got than back from somewhere and you forgot to get a keychain. It's okay because we probably got one for you. Okay, so we carry keychains in every kind of form and matter that you can think of. 
And it was a black person who invented the keychain. And why is that? And it's hilarious because um, he stood there. It's like a bottled water. This is like bottled water to me. <laughs> who thought of putting water in a bottle and selling, selling it? Right? it. <laughs> Whoever did is a multimillionaire. So keychains. Keychains the same thing. You know, so he's sitting there. His name is London. Loudon. L-O-U-D-I-N. Frederick. And um, he was pickpocketed. And back then, now we're not talking about, and I, when I say back then, I mean in 1894, and there were not really cars with keys, so we're talking keychains that would be for your house. Or your shred, Whatever garage, you need keys for, like that, right? Yeah. So um, somebody pickpocketed him and took the keys. And he had heard several times people losing the keys and stuff like that, so he thought, you know what, maybe I should put something on my key. And maybe I won't lose them and no one will rob me. And he patented it and bing, boom, we have keychains. Keychains. <laughs> <laughs> I which, mean, that is hilarious to me. Which, to be totally honest with you and our viewers that are watching today, be honest. If you didn't have a keychain on your keys, how many times do you think you would still have them? Because I would probably but, lose time. Um, so, but something I did have to... So his name is Frederick Loudon. And what's hilarious, and what a great invention. What an easy, great invention. Oh, absolutely. And it's... Not, well, I shouldn't say easy, because if it was easy, then more, more than just him would have thought of it. Um... But he still encountered horrendous um, racism back then. Oh, yeah. Well, I got to tell you, one thing about him is he was born in Ohio in 1940. And um, his father was wealthy. Okay? So his father's farm was taxed. His father owned the farm. Okay. And it was taxed for public education. However, they would not allow his son, his children to go to school. Which, at that point, it's <laughs> just like... It, but he still had to pay for it. Pay for it, which is so backwards. Mm -hmm. Not only that... His father donated to um, to Harem College, to Harem College, donated money to it. He didn't have to. He donated. And when his son tried to get into Harem College, they refused his his admittance because of race. And maybe maybe his father took it in like the few grains of salt is in like maybe if I do like show them that we're a good family, uh, yeah, I'm that sure. they might. I'm but sure. you know, things never work out that way. Not like that anymore. I know, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I love my friends. But I love the keychain. <laughs> yeah. Thing. I mean, I think that's great. <laughs> I love that. Okay, so what are you going to talk about? Um, cool. So we're going to talk about Madam C.J. Walker really quick. What did she do? Uh, Madam C.J. Walker, essentially, she, she had the thought process of hair straightening products and tools, but... On the contrary, Madam C.J. Walker unfortunately did not invent the hot comb, according to a Labella's Bundles biography of um, Black Woman in America. A Frenchman, Marcel Gratitude, popularized it in Europe and in 1870s, mm -hmm. and even Sears and Bloomingdale's advertised the hair straightening styling tools in their catalogs in 1880. But there is a massive difference between the. This is a crimping iron. That is, is it. it look, essentially, it looks almost the same. Yeah. Um, but this is on curly permanent. Yes, so that's going to be like a product that's going to be like the tool right. version. And we're showing you these because we don't have a hair straightening comb. And to be totally honest with you, I don't own a hot comb. They're, I'm scared. They get so hot. And and you put them on the stove, right? Yeah, a, a real hot comb is made out of cast iron. You literally have to have like an electric stove that has the spiral that you can put the comb in because it's got to sit there for a long right, or, time. Uh, or a wood-burning stove. Or a wood-burning stove, mm -hmm. yep. And that hot comb that cast iron gets hot, and then that's what you would use to straighten your hair. How they could handle it back then, I have no Are idea. Are getting any information or anything? Or people just... Oof, wow. I think it's because my phone's a long ways. So anyways... We have nothing. We haven't had any comments? Nope. Just Steve and, Jay, uh, Steve and David and Bill. Mm. And your mom. Bye, Bye. mom. So we're showing you this because this is down the road, like I said, not all inventions are exactly what it is that they are today. Now you can still buy the hot, hot combs. Oh, absolutely, today, absolutely. But very few more people are going to use those more professional. They even have hot combs now where all you have to do is plug it in and it still gets significantly hot. But mm -hmm. I mean, at that point, I would just buy a straightener. <laughs> yeah. So we brought these out just to give you an idea that these were derived from, probably. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Because she explained how they use those, and it's scary. <laughs> it's for sure. Uh, and 
quickly, we're going to move on to William H. Richardson. He <laughs> yeah, uh, I love it. It's so cute. Yeah, that is a big buggy. Uh, patent improvement to the baby carriage in the United States on June 18th in 1989. He I don't have a big, a big one. But this is essentially what a baby buggy is. Here, I'll get is. it closer. There, there <laughs> it's big. He designed an, uh, and enabled the bassinet positioning to face either in or outward, and it rotated on a central joint, a limiting device that kept it from being rotated more than 90 degrees. And this is one of the discrepancies that I did find. He didn't invent the buggy. He invented that little tiny bearing that rotates the buggy so the parents can either have the baby facing outward or have the baby facing inward towards you. Oh, okay. Very good. So baby buggies you won't find here. However, you will find the, the doll size baby buggies as well as, you know, we have some pencil sharpeners, which by the way was also invented by a oh, black person. Sure was. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to talk before I get into that, right? You know, so Detroit. Let's talk about Detroit. Detroit has one of the um, most famous, wait, let's call it this way, Midnight. Yes, Midnight. So Detroit's known as Midnight. Midnight is the last stop on the Underground Railroad. Yes. That leads you to Canada. <laughs> so um, Detroit was a destination. Where people needed to be. Well, right. When, so when they were going along the, and not all Underground Railroads were underground. Sure. So as they were going, they were going to midnight. Sure. They were going to midnight. So Detroit was, was nicknamed Midnight. Mm -hmm. And so because it was the last stop before it got to Canada where owning humans was illegal mm -hmm. and always has been. So um, Detroit has a monument downtown uh, for the Underground Railroad. If you get to Detroit, if you're in Detroit, go look at it because it is moving. And you can see and stand in spots all around where, um, you know, people who were fleeing this country to get freedom in Canada um, stood. And it can be sobering for anyone. There's a statue that is also located down there. There is. There is a big statue down there. And it looks like this. It looks like this. And it tells you everything you need to know about the Underground Railroad in Detroit. So Detroit has historical footings when it comes to um, the trying to get people to freedom. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a woman here, and I cannot remember her name. She, um, who would help do it. I read it, but I can't remember the name. And of we, course I didn't highlight it. I was going to say, we read it. so many things I know, today. we read so many. So if you have a chance, in Detroit, take a look at the heritage down there. And I got to take a day trip to go do it. And I got to tell you, there was, so how they came across it, which is what I thought was cool. And then we'll get back to product. I know, right? Sometimes I feel like everybody just really deserves to have a warm bed. What is? Oh, I know, right? Every, no, wait. It's not a matter of feeling. Everybody does deserve, deserve. to have a, room, a warm bed. Warm, yeah, period. See, I can't speak. No, it's okay, dude. A our, warm our, bed. Our brains are moving a lot faster than our bodies right now. You know, now. and I don't care where you're from. I don't care what color you are. I don't care, you know, who you sleep with. I don't care any of that. You deserve a warm bed, and respect. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. I mean, period. But let me tell you, and I say but on the aspect of, let me get back to this because we're going to talk about Mariner's Church downtown. Okay, yeah. So Mariner's Church downtown, um, a sanctuary for seamen, um, which, you know, the Navy um, or the Coast Guard or whatever, uh, spiritual refuge and conveniently located steps from Detroit. It is the monument that they have by the river, yes. And so, well, it's much larger than that picture looked at. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, it's actually at, in, um, uh, I almost said Horton Plaza, that's, that's San Diego. <laughs> um, in, uh, what's the name of the plaza down there? Heart Plaza. Heart Plaza. It's in Heart Plaza. And so when they, the Mariner's Church, they were going to move. They were, in 1955, they decided they were going to move the Mariner's Church. So they, you know, picked it up and left. And when they did that, they discovered the railroad. And they said, everybody needs to know about this. And I didn't know about it until I started working here. And Jason told me about it. So um, Detroit and their historical value in this country just continues to amaze me. Oh, absolutely. I feel like 
with the changes that they're giving us with Belle Isle, I feel like we have deserved that for so long as a community. We deserved a really clean, nice place for people to fish and go to check out our conservatory yeah. and, and things like that. And I feel like it's a long time for Detroit to, to have something like so that. So the product that you see here, oh, you can't see it, can you? <laughs> the product that you see here, all down in here and over in here, and we'll bring it up and show you as we go. Um, were, was all either invented by or the morphed, into, morphed into, morphed into, yep, <laughs> uh, by a um, Black American. Yep. Okay. So because when and I'm going to tell you, I was so excited to do this, was I not? Yeah. <laughs> because I am a firm believer that when we talk about American history, that includes everybody, everybody, everything, everybody, everything, I mean, everybody. If I mean. American history is the ground in which we stand on. Mm -hmm. So every single person on the ground in which we stand on contributes to our American history. So I was excited and I was astounded by how much stuff I have here. Agreed, Maria. Detroit is the coolest city. She said, after Madrid, Detroit is one of the coolest cities in the world. I don't know. I still need to go to Madrid. <laughs> I still need to go to Madrid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And then I'll make that determination because I may not come back to Detroit. I know, right? <laughs> Every time I go somewhere else, like Chicago is just like a fancier. Madrid Detroit, just like, sounds nice, fabulous. Yes. <laughs> and I know that Madrid is like any other big city, has everything I yep. it. But um, I still want to go to Madrid. So the rolling pin was created. But she let said, me... let's go. I love her. You're great. I know, Maria. <laughs> she has a house there, too. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, outside of Madrid. So Osborne Dorsey. Osborne Dorsey. Okay, so the reason why I do not wear expensive watches is I blame him. Okay, so Os Osborne Dorsey, I blame for not being able to wear expensive watches. And so why is that? Because, um, why do you think that is? Because you'll swing your wrist around and bash it on a doorknob. He created the doorknob. <laughs> and so therefore, every watch that I've broken, Have because he created the doorknob. Door if I hit my wrist and break my wrist, he create, it's his fault because he created the doorknob. No, I'm kidding. So he uh, not only created the doorknob, he created the door stop too. And so doorknobs, so all the doorknobs that you grab was um, actually patented by him. Oh, nice. Didn't know that. This is him right here. That's him. And that's an awfully good picture of him since they know nothing about him I'm, other than yeah. that. What, that's what I found was interesting. Historical reference to Osborne Dorsey is gone. Yep. The only thing we know is based off of the patents he did. And that's it. And that's it. And in 1878, he patented the doorknob and the doorstop at the same time. Because you probably said, dang. And prior, and I thought, okay, well, they had to have something to open doors back then, right? Prior to that, because yeah. we had doors on our house. And they did. They had latches. Latches, they had little string poles that open and close doors, Imagine. stuff like that. And it was him looking at the door going, we just need a knob to use. Yeah, like something actually tangible instead of a little string. So this is common sense yeah. inventment. Absolutely. Same with the keychain. Yeah, it's literally. And the bottle of water. Common, well, no, that's not bottle water. That's not common sense. But common, because, you know, in the 70s, we drank out of the hose. Yeah, yeah, you know, best the water hose. ever, though. So, um... He, this is common sense invent, inventing. Oh, yeah, agreed. Because he looked at the door and he said, how can I make it better? better. And he did. <laughs> you know, it's so simple. And we take them for granted because they're in everything we have in our house. Literally. Now, we carry doorknobs. I'm currently sold out except for this one. That one. <laughs> of course, because I'm doing the show on it. So, of course, I sell out of it. But um, the older doorknobs are better. Oh, yeah. Because then they don't have the... Mm -hmm. um, Little, I don't know what the actual piece of mechanical equipment in it is, but how that one is. I like mm -hmm. the doors that just click. Oh, I see what you're saying. The, see, old doorknobs would be key-driven only. Oh, yeah. We had a customer earlier yeah. talking to you. It would be key-driven only. So, um, so yeah, it's pretty cool. We were talking about this earlier, and I did want to touch base on this uh, before we get a little bit too close to the end. Why are we talking about it? We're only at our halfway point. Okay. Um, in 1926, Carter G. Woodson established Negro History Week. The celebration highlighted black Americans' histories, lives, and contributions contributions. In 1976, Negro History Week explained that the month-long celebration we observe today has now became a whole month. Yeah, a whole month. Yep. It was only a week, 
And what's funny is when I was doing research on him as well, I thought it was interesting that it was exactly now up here. We're going to talk about these in a minute. Oh yes. But it was exactly fifty years from um, the Emancipation of Proclamation that he traveled to Chicago and um, oh, I got you know what? I'm such a Carver displayed his first, his very first Washington Carver, and then I'll get back. I'm sorry, I'm jumping all over the place. Washington Carver displayed his very first creation of peanut butter or and peanut driven um, products. products at the 1893 World's Fair. Oh, no way. Yeah, at the 1893 World's Fair. And if you guys remember about the World's Fair, the whole point of that was is to show the world the mm -hmm. new and upcoming things that are going to be happening within the next 10 years. So that would be a revolutionary yeah. thing to see at the World's Fair. So, uh, and especially a, a black person to do it. Absolutely. Because they had to go in different, different entrances. Yeah, you had to go in different entrances. You had to be mm -hmm. chaperoned. Like, that was a huge thing. Well, women had to be chaperoned. Oh, absolutely. Too. Yep. Just women, period. So go okay. Do you want to do this now? Uh, well, actually, we can. Are we? Yeah, yeah, I think this is cool. Okay, so these are original, and these are from the Frank Leslie's Illustrated, the newspaper, and these are from. Go ahead and show that one first. And these are from 18, 1865. Um, this one here that you're looking at is from the celebration of the Emancipation of Proclamation. It is when. Um, uh, Lincoln went through the town and they were all thanking him and everything. That's this paper. Now with the Frank paper, with the, the Frank Leslie's paper, back then in the 1800s, they um, only produced these papers twice a month. So what you're seeing here is one month worth of information that was put out, So this right? is one, and then this is like month two or three or four or whatever it is. And then there would be one in between each. Now this one that she's showing you here, it, again, original newspaper. This one shows the illustration of the townspeople finding John Wilkes Booth, the one who shot Lincoln, and dragging him out of the barn. The picture you see of the gentleman above is the actual person who shot John Wilkes Booth. And this is David... It should be 1865 as yep. well. Yep, May 13th, yeah. 1865. This the, is April 22nd. The, that is these. Now, we do have these here at the store, and yep. they are original, and there are some other really cool articles and advertisements in there, and advertisements. But what is so what's, what I find fabulous about these, and yet sad at the same time, is the rest of the country did not know that the ants, the uh, um, a proclamation... The Emancipation of Proclamation actually happened for two more years. Right, because you didn't, they didn't live close enough to... Uh, actually, that in Texas, Juneteenth. Mm -hmm. Juneteenth is, is when they found out. Yep. And that was two years after. after. And don't let people say we didn't have good communication from one village or one city or town to another. We got information to them other ways. Yep. So there's no reason why this shouldn't have gone. And then uh, Jason and I were also talking about something totally, totally relevant earlier. They would send people out on horses, but that was not nearly as effective because if you tell somebody that they need to tell everybody and their mom about this one news thing, but you don't agree with it, you're, you're probably not going to go tell everybody about it. You know, people it. are people. Regardless if you were born in the 1600s or today. Right. You still have the same, um, we still have the same flaws. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, but these are phenomenal. A piece of history. Oh, you can't see those. That was a lot of... Uh, I, I kind of curved it to the side okay. so the glare was gone. So let me do this so you can see them very closely. Look at the drawings. No pictures, all drawings, because these are original. We need to talk... I missed it. She said we need to talk about the Shen Loves Lincoln. Oh, yeah. So these are really, really cool. And, you know, Lincoln, Lincoln was a big, big, big... And, you know, he wasn't always the nicest man. He was a Republican. And, um, but he knew that owning, owning another human was wrong. Wrong, absolutely. Why it, why it waited till him, I have no idea. Canada apparently was fine with it. <laughs> <laughs> Telling you. <laughs> what you got? You want me to go? No, go ahead. Okay, cool. Um, so this is probably one of my favorite things. Oh, yes. What is her name again? Do you got her? Or do I got I her. Ever? I got her. Okay. 
I got that list of a few people. Okay, awesome. I'll make this quick. Mm -hmm. uh, so as of 2022 is now, it, it's officially ended and it's 2023. I just recently found out this really cool piece of information that 13.6% uh, of the U.S. population, according to the U.S. Census Bureau, are black people. And that is over 45 million different lives that are being experienced across the country. Now, you can add to that because the Census Bureau doesn't always get everything accurate. Uh -huh. And especially if we're in more um, lower income areas, sure. we may not count them correctly. Sure. So, therefore, there, I'm sure there's more. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. But... Um, just like a rough estimate speaking, right. that is 45 million different lives that are being lived totally differently and that are creating things just like our your neighbor is and my neighbor is. And William Tucker's son, um, he was a servant for from Great Britain and he was the first uh, recorded African child to be born in the colonies in 1624. Oh, I did not know that. Uh, Vermont was the first colony to ban slavery in 1777. And in 1770s, a Quaker named Anthony Benzet created the first school for African American children. That's awesome. Where was it? Do you know? Um, they did not give me the location, but I'm sure if I probably looked up Anthony Benzet, oh, I, would, okay. I could probably find it. So we went through a bunch of other ones, and we're gonna, you know, a bunch of other items here, like for instance, the lantern. Heck yeah. The lantern. And we have these, and they're great for outside in the summer. We actually have multiples yes, of those, too, just in case. And we do carry, we do carry the Coleman lanterns. We're just out of them right now. Um, and then we have like the ice cream scoop. Yeah, ice cream scoop. Ice cream probably. scoop. I and, mean, ice cream. And that's Alfred L. Crail. He was a businessman and inventor, and he was best known for inventing the ice cream scoop in 1897. And I bet you he did, it was at the um, the the World's Fair. It says. Um, it may not. On this date in 1889, he, yeah, it doesn't really say anything about that. The hairbrush. That would have been really cool if he did. I know. The hairbrush was invented by. What were they you don't have for? It. I, ha I know, right? Rocks. Okay, so let me go through here. This is a, a, a small list of, because the list was long. I mean, there were so many. Yeah. And some of it, I mean, did not pertain to our store. Like the elevator. Right. Like the, or gas mask. Or gas mask. Well, if I had one. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but for like, um, you know, it was spark plugs. Yeah, spark plugs was one. So, um, and these always, these also go more modern as well. So, 1892, the ironing board revolutionized the way we did laundry. Literally. You didn't have to sit on the floor with ironing a Ironing board. Anymore. You know it's it's just astounds me and why we don't know that I, I i mean i can tell you thomas jefferson what he did because they teach you that i can tell you what other people did because an ironing board isn't such a big necessity no as but like food is and, absolutely you know i mean other things an ironing board i bet to some is a huge necessity, necessity right? absolutely Ooh. so oh, I <laughs> <laughs> so um the ironing board was invented by sarah boone okay okay in 1892 <laughs> I would show you an ironing board, but I don't have one. You guys know what it looks like. You um, probably have one. <laughs> a home security system. So, like, what you would know now as co -invented. ADT. There was two. Yeah. There was a, a white and black woman, and Mary Von Britton Brown, in 1966, nice. invented the home security system. Um, the three-light traffic signal. Now, you're sitting there, and you're wondering, hmm, people are, are slamming into it. Again, a common sense design, a common sense. And I bet that ironing board was common sense. Oh yeah, yeah literally. Sure. They said, I don't want to burn my carpet anymore. What can I iron my clothes on? That's not going to catch on fire. <laughs> so they probably did it on the butler pantry. Yeah, literally. Mm -hmm. So, um, traffic light probably sat there and thought all these cars are good. I can do green, yellow, red. And then that'll be it. So. And so, um, Garrett Morgan in 1923 invented the traffic light. We love that. Because what would we even do without that? We'd still have someone standing in the middle of the intersection guiding people. That would take forever. And do you know he only had an elementary school education? No way. Yep. And an elementary school education. Good for him. Um, so then we're talking about refrigerator trucks yep. in 1940. So like, would that be considered Frederick like an ice cream truck? So like, you see the, the beer trucks? Those yeah. are refrigerators. Oh, really? You see the, like, um... Ice cream trucks yeah. or um, a like refrigerator. Trucks. So it's the refrigeration system probably they developed on a transportation purpose. The automatic ele elevator doors, like I said, Alexander Miles. Unfortunately, I don't have automatic ele elevator doors. Um, 
these are all black Americans mm -hmm. that made America better. And they also made the world better because elevator, automatic elevator doors are in every building mm -hmm. in every country. Not every building in every country, but in Pretty every building of. in every civilized, um, westernized country mm -hmm. and, um, or, and uh, some buildings in other countries. <laughs> but so this man's invention because the gate yes. is what they and, used And they have. kept getting stuck. And if you're 90 years old, you're not pulling those gates open. Do you remember the beginning of Rosemary's Baby where they almost get stuck in the elevator and the guy has to be like, hey, you need to order that? Yes, but you know what? It Also, the invention of an automatic elevator door also probably got rid of the ele ele elevator man. Oh, yeah, duh, because no one needed to be there to open no. the door anymore. Unless you're in a high-end building, then you'd have one. Sure. So, um, carbon light bulb. Which, I mean, like, so... When he made the car, did, was there any extra information on the carbon light bulb as to like... Um, when Edison turned night into day, it was um, Louis Latimer, L-A-T-I-M-E-R, Latimer? Mm -hmm. Lat okay. That sounds about right. It was him who, who helped him invent the actual light bulb. Gotcha. Okay. Not the fact that it was electric. Right. The actual light bulb. bulb. Yep. Then we have the IBM PC monitor. Okay, now we're jumping ahead. Okay, we're jumping ahead in time. <laughs> yeah. All of us have it, and we would not have these. We would not have those, probably, because in 1980, um, color IBM PC monitors and the gigahertz chip were all co-invented by Mark Dean and a black man. Crazy. David, isn't that crazy? So that, that ties right into David with what you do for a living. Heck yeah. You know, so it, it, they were co so you had two different people who worked on it. Two people sat down and said, all right, how can we take this one thing and let's make it better? And one the gigahertz. Had, yeah, one person had half the idea and the other person had the other half and they smashed it together. And it they became, developed magic. Yep, it, it became, uh, we Literally. keep using the word revolutionary, but again, these people were causing revolutions. These things are life-changing for some people. It might not be for all, but some of these things are legitimately life-changing. They are. And, you know, this is, we're just touching on a few things. Because we wanted to tie it into a vintage and antique store. And these are things that you can find in vintage and not elevator doors, but well, maybe. <laughs> um, we were at an um, antique store in Hollywood or in LA on Melrose. It was Melrose Antiques. And they had, ele they had elevator doors in there. But they were like, this place had some gorgeous stuff in it. So if you ever get to um, LA, to the Grove, just down the street from the farmer's market, is Melrose Antiques? How are you going to get them home? They'll ship them. <laughs> if you can afford those doors, they'll ship them. So I was thinking this whole time about different countries and if they did ever celebrate uh, mm -hmm. Black History Month or if they did not how they yeah. did it. Uh, so Dr. Jean Augustine is also known for the mother of Black History Month in Canada for establishing the celebrations in 1995, just like the U.S. celebrations occur in February. Black History Month takes place in October throughout the Netherlands, Ireland, and the United Kingdom. Well, the U.K.'s final initial focus was on the American history and the country now focuses on celebrating black British history. David, I don't know if anybody knows that, to be honest with you. You can touch it. You're not, I mean, that's nothing new. I, I did not know that. I didn't either. And I bet you a lot of people don't know that, that in the tech industry. And you that, said it was gigahertz, right? It, yeah. Here. It is. Yeah, gigahertz. Gigahertz chip, co-invented by Mark Dean. Yeah. Do you think they're ready for my? Did you know? Yes. <laughs> did oh. you guys? What are you talking about? What? Wait, what are we doing? Did you know? The did you know? Yeah. The did, did you know? know? <laughs> <laughs> We're silly. Okay, so did you guys know that the 100 folds in a chef's hat represents the 100 different ways that you can cook an egg? Isn't that crazy? I did not know that. I didn't know that either. Oh my goodness. And I always wondered what the point of a chef's hat was, why, and when I just looked up super crazy unrealistic facts, that was the third one and it just really stuck with me. So however many folds, so the hundred folds that are in a chef's hat. That represents the 100 different ways that you can cook it. That you 10 bucks, I can think of 101. No, I'm, like, I'm like, honestly, I can think of four ways Actually, to cook an egg and that's it. What I would do is just pass that on to Steve. How many ways? <laughs>
Like I, I probably know four too. I'm like, um, <laughs> you can omelet, scramble it, over easy, medium, and that's like throw it. Throw it. Throw it. <laughs> like that's really all I'm getting out of that. <laughs> okay, so what were you gonna say? Oh yes. Okay, so my last piece um, that I really wanted to talk about was is um, where's his name at? Oh, yes. Okay. Philip L. Downing, 1957 to 1934. He was an African-American inventor from Providence, Rhode Island, and he was best known for his two significant inventions, which is a type of street letterbox and operating street railway switches. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I thought that was so a lot cool. of our, a lot of, I mean, it's almost everything we do mm -hmm. on a way. When you, when you look at it and you walk through, you walk through any store, really. But I'm going to talk about vintage and antique stores. I'm going to talk about Time Warp. Yeah. You walk through Time Warp, you can pretty much guarantee that you're going to come across multiple things that were made by not just black Americans or white Americans, but by Asian you know Americans. Asian Americans, by Latino Native Americans, Americans, by like, Native Americans, absolutely. by by everybody. And um, that's what makes these, that's what makes everything so great because everything is not the same. And I keep thinking of it, if it makes my life a better place, then why am I even mad about it to begin with? Right? That's crazy. But we have, I mean, David, have, what? David said there's a hundred different types of pans you could cook an egg in and I can only think of ten ways. And then mm -hmm. um, Beth said, I was hoping to go to Michigan to see her store this weekend, but unfortunately she cannot make it. Uh, so she said, thank you for making my evening. Way more interesting. Oh, absolutely. So guys. any other time, I mean, we're here, we're not going anywhere. You're right. <laughs> and if you get to Las Vegas, we are also, you know, have a footprint there as well. So, um, but there, like I said, we could go on for days Literally. talking about what the black community and con contributed to our everyday lives. Absolutely. And when you start researching it, you start realizing that this is ridiculous that we don't know these. <laughs> yeah, that's ridiculous. You know, <laughs> and in a time, in a contentious time like this, education is what will make things easier on people, knowing what is right and wrong and, and when it, it comes with history. And it's also the coolest thing is when you watch our show, and I know we give you guys a lot of information over this next go 60 back. minutes. Yeah, go back and re-educate yourself. Yeah. You can always send Time Warp Vintage, the actual store page, a message about anything that we talk about. You also can comment live during our shows on Tuesdays, just in case. So, one of the things that I wanted to mention, and that Jason had brought up, and I kind of wish he was here because he was good. That's pretty. Um, kind of wish he was here was um, that Douglas, Frederick Douglas, he, he wrote, um, yeah, isn't that pretty? He wrote a book called The Narrative of Life. It was his life, and it was actually the first book that really depicted the, the troubles that a black youth and um, teenager into adulthood deals with on a daily basis. And it's called, um, uh, it's called Frederick Douglass, the narrative of his life. Which, I mean, you would get so much useful information as far as, like, his feelings, his thought process, how mm -hmm. he moved every day doing certain things. So, give it a try. Marie, I know you like to read. Read his book. You'd probably get a kick out of it. Um, so, like I said, there's a lot of stuff here. The rolling pin. Yes. You know, and I want to tell you, a lot of people had a problem with the, the Aunt Jemima. Oh, my God, yes, we cannot forget our girl. No, we cannot. That's a real person. Yes, okay, and her that's family a real is very family. upset over that. And um, it's one thing when you depict a, uh, a person of a certain race in a unflattering, in a, in a bad aspect. In a derogatory way. That without their permission. Sure. But when you have a family who um, is proud of the fact that they have somebody on the cover of something, I don't know if it's really right to remove it just because somebody else found it offensive. And why did they? I mean, it's, I, I don't understand that aspect of it. it when the family's like, that's my daughter or my great-grandmother or whoever. I feel like it was one of those scenarios where, to be totally truthful, it was like, well, if we can't have it, you shouldn't be able to have it either. Yeah, possibly. If we In don't have society. an aunt Ashley or an Aunt Sandy, then you shouldn't have an Aunt Jemima. And let me tell you, I have some aunts and Elba. So come on. I love you, Aunt Elba. <laughs> Um, oh, so that's a cute name. I, I love know. That. I love you. I know. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, the names are names. No, but, for sure. And I know they 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 look at it 
as a derogatory name when it's actually not. It's probably her name. Or it's you know probably her maiden name. name. Probably. But um, so we have a lot. And that makes those things a little bit more expensive, but or sought after. So the bug zapper. Oh yeah. I thought that was hilarious. This thing's crazy. You the fill bug it up with zapper. Isn't that crazy? Zap away. Invented, but I mean, this is stuff we use on a daily basis. Literally. What was that? Uh, that was I, I read oh, it too. Okay. Um, so I personally wanted to say this before we still have ten minutes to go, but I I felt like for anybody who's watching this and their main question is is why is Black History Month important? Why should we learn about Black History mm. Month? Uh, Black History Month is a very special and specific time for not only African Americans, but for anybody around the world to acknowledge key figures from our past, present, and future. And it's an opportunity to spotlight and celebrate the achievements that African Americans have accomplished in this country, despite the history of racism and oppression and things that could come along in the future. Again, it doesn't matter what color you are, people make cool things and they change our lives every day. And we use them and we don't even know who makes them right you're right you're absolutely right so to me when you when you as a white person to me <laughs> or pink technically um to me when you celebrate black history month you're celebrating american history absolutely american history we are american history mm -hmm. we are Amer american history we Keyword is we. We are American history. <laughs> we are America. So when we talk about the historical value of our country, mm -hmm. when we talk about items that we carry here that um, that made up our country, that made our country fun to be in, stuff like that, it is everybody's hands that are in there. Absolutely. It is white, black. It is um, uh, Native American. And, it is Asian. And, it is... American. And I'm so glad you brought that up because throughout the whole entire hour tonight, we, we kept touching base on the fact of a lot of these black inventors, they weren't the sole proprietary person to no. make that invention. They Again, they sat down with another person. This person could have been purple with green polka dots. And this person could have said, hey, you have a really good idea. And my really good idea matches your really good idea. Right. And, you know, we all... We all change through time. Absolutely. So just like we change through time, product changes through time. Sure, it's gotta get to, better. To make it better, to make it more universal, to make stronger, it stronger, smarter. Stronger, smarter, unfortunately maybe not as well made. Right. But um, that's when you come to vintage stores like yeah. this and you buy the real well, <laughs> well made stuff. But even if you buy stuff from the 50s, 60s, and 70s, you're still dealing with American history. Absolutely. You know, American history on what they invented, mm -hmm and the items they invented, yep. and we sell them. So when I look at things and, and, you know, I have a young person go, oh, you shouldn't, oh, those are stolen from Native American lands. Uh, the, the, um, sage. Thank you. The sage. Like, we carry sage here, I'm like, guys. seriously, I, and I, I have a mouth on me, and Steve, my mom, everybody will tell you that. I say what comes into my head. But you guys think of it logically. How do you think the Native Americans had a living, made a living? That's they what took I their don't goods see. and traded and bartered and sold. Understand that when you come into a vintage and antique store and or you come into any store whatsoever, just because they have product there that were made by Native Americans, product there that were made by by black Americans or, or even African Americans from different Africa or different countries, it doesn't matter. Um we're not stealing them. No, no, no. We are actually helping to support their culture. Now, and take your exact statement, and now let's break it down for people who still might not quite understand yet. Now, if we're going to look at pearls and glass beads strictly only for people who live in Iceland, I'm just going to use that mm -hmm. for an example. They, that's where pearls and glass beads come from. Right. Now, let's swap that out for, like, lettuce. Now, if you if you think that it's inappropriate for us to have lettuce because we're not from Iceland and vice versa, how are we ever going to have good right. so, goods in our life? Beads, the beads that we wear every day, the beads that that pe that you know that people have on, and I'm not talking about pearls. I'm not talking about um, uh, you know, like um, pearls. I'm talking about like terracotta, like handmade, terracotta beads. handmade beads, stuff like that, that we wear. We buy handmade beads. Do you know that you could look at that as perpetuating a culture? Absolutely. Because in Africa, in South Africa, they use them as money. Mm -hmm. 
They use them as, you know, a form, of currency, a form of currency, stuff like that. So we need to look beyond that and we need to, to realize that when we purchase things from these different cultures, regardless of what the culture is, we are helping to help their culture through survive which is and why, thrive yes just like when they purchase from us and when we say please support small businesses when you when we say that and you guys come to time work and support a small business keep in mind that that money stays within your community it does that goes back into your restaurants that it are right does. across the street it goes to your children's schools so they can go and get new supplies that that stays within your community when you go to big box stores that money just goes somewhere totally random two seconds after you you spend it there it goes to the the president's paycheck which isn't here no <laughs> No. So, you know, we need to, to look at this stuff as American made, not the color of the person who made it. Not black owned made or black, black made or black owned woman or made. Or white or made or stuff like that. When you come to everyday di stuff that you use, it's American, American made. Period. And, a, and if you ask me from what I've researched, actually a lot of the, the inventions that were um, thought of or created by black Americans actually make more common sense. Is that weird? <laughs> and, and when I look at and I read these things, um, it's taken, it's just, it's, I'm, I'm flabbergasted that I didn't know a lot of this. I feel like they kind of watched everybody else. Like, for example, they watched everybody iron and burn themselves and catch uh -huh. things on fire. And they said, hmm, what can we make so people stopped hurting themselves? Right? <laughs> so come in, because we love to talk about our product. We love to talk about you know, where it came from, if we remember. Now, understand that we do not remember every single story that was told to us by all of this stuff because we are human and it's gone the next day. But sometimes we do. But sometimes we do, especially if they, they have they them stop. really cool. Yeah. yeah. Um, but we carry quite a bit of things that, that were invented or made better by black Americans. Heck yeah. And by black people, period. Yeah. Because not just Americans, but from all over the country. I mean, all over the world. Yeah. It's a country. <laughs> I mean, hey, we're talking about somebody who's not in Michigan, so I think they got the point. Yes. <laughs> so, um, you know, some of the other things that uh, we were looking at are, anything else anybody asking? She said, great show tonight. Thank you very much. Glad you stayed with us. What time is it? It is uh, 25. 25. So this and we grabbed this. I mean, it was like the closest thing. We grabbed this because, and actually you could still use it as well. Yeah, the, yeah. A biscuit cutter was created by a black American back in the 1800s. And I wish I could go through. So our employee, my employee, Jason, mm -hmm. it pops up on, he knew we were doing the show. And a, a week or so ago, he sends me this list that popped up on his page. Oh my God, thank you. Because it gave us a start. Yeah. And um, so, there was so much that there's no way we could cover it. We had to call each other and be like, okay, well, what five are you going to take and what five am I going to take? Because we don't want to do the same one. But I'm telling you, those of you who um, live in Michigan and don't do what I did when I lived in San Francisco and said, oh, one day I'll get to, to Alcatraz. One day I'll get to Alcatraz. Because well, guess what? I lived there for 13 years and I still haven't been to Alcatraz. And now I live in Michigan, so it's not happening tomorrow. <laughs> so don't be that person. Go down to Detroit. Go down to Detroit and learn the history of the Underground Railroad because it's very interesting. And don't be afraid also, of the city. The city is great. The city loves you guys. you got to realize that we did our due diligence in Detroit, too, of destroying something that was a black community. Black Bottom. Oh, yeah. Black Bottom was a jazz wonderland. It's one of my favorite things and, to educate people um, on. It was right downtown where I where 375 is, in which I hear they're tearing down and going to put the neighborhood back. But it had some of the biggest jazz clubs. It was, it was considered... The I don't want to say New Orleans because it's that's more Creole. But it, it had was that more jazz. Yeah, it had that super loud, rambunctious yeah. feel. That super vibe, like let's get up and dance mm -hmm. together. Type and what did feel. we do? We said, oh, we'll just take this property and, and ruin it and pull it all out and put a freeway there that that went for yeah. three miles, or not even three miles, a mile. So, uh, from what I understand, they're ripping that out and putting uh, the neighborhood back. But you've lost the the fantastic the jazz aspect. Club. Yeah, that all that's well, hopefully gone. it'll come back. You know, so, um, anyways, thank you guys so much. Um, I did have, to be honest with you, I'm going to tell you because um, this is life. Yeah. I've, I've received a few emails from um, concerned, I'm going to do this, concerned people 
about me being white talking about Black History Month. And I will solemnly say this as an employee of Jason and Steve. They are very educated men. They teach me a lot. I have never learned so much being working here and just being an employee of theirs. If anything, I would probably rather listen to them than somebody who says that they don't. But I don't understand <laughs> that because to me, a Black American historical significance is an American historical for significance. I was not raised to be racist. You're not being racist by talking about what had already happened. Well, I'm not being racist That's, talking about but, America. And, right, yeah, exactly. Like, nothing about what we're talking I don't about think is. is... You know, and to be honest with you, I growing up in Southern California, the racism shifts there. Oh, because absolutely. Because it's, it's there, it's not... It's not, well, I'm sure it is, but I didn't witness it. It was more towards the Mexican community, which is sad. Um, it was it was here that I, it was more prevalent and, and talked about and heard. So, um, you know, and it's sad in my eyes, but um, the world is the way it is, and we just need to make it better. I was going to say, I feel like we're slowly getting better one person. We need to make it better in yeah. all aspects. Every aspect. You know, we are all human. You take our skin away, and guess what? We all have the same things. Okay, we'll look the same. Regardless of what you look at, look like, regardless of what you believe in, have a good night, Bill. And regardless of what political views you have. Period. Period. Anyways, thank you guys. Love and you so much. I'm not going to go on and on. Come in, take a look, jump over to YouTube. That'll be on tomorrow. Give us a like. I promise I'll get it fixed. <laughs> Happy Black History Month, everybody! Yes, happy Black And next, <laughs> next uh, week, I'm not sure yet, uh, it'll be popped out. But I am going to tell you that the last week, the last Tuesday in March, will be on the LGBT community and what they did for um, American history. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. Because, because it actually exists. This is going to be another one of those shows that I'm going to put this category in. It is, we're just going to go come back to back with facts. Because and, and I have stuff here that was invented and made. Yep. We use things every day that were invented and made by by um, people who had to hide their homosexuality. Or their gayness. Mm -hmm. And now they're just living their best life with uh, through through people. Like if they're us. still alive. Yeah, we're, well, like for, for <laughs> like we're living their life. Through yes, that, exactly. So, anyways, join us then. Um, we're not talking political. I'm going to tell you that yep. it's going to be based solely on what we sell here. And that is and, it. And um, you know, just little things on what they can do. Negative so, anyways, thank be, you. Yeah, negative comments will just be ignored. To be totally honest. Why are there because, some? No, for next week. Oh well, what do you mean? If yeah. You mean when we do the LGBT? Yeah. If there's negative comments, comments, you will no longer be on our Facebook. Yeah. Because we're not here for negativity. We are here to educate, to educate and enjoy what different cultures created this country Together. to be. Together, yeah. Anyway, All right, you guys. Have a good you. night. Bye. Bye. <laughs>